So um, I decided to cook this uh, shrimp steak, New York shrimp steak, right? So I tried something different. Um, so I don't want to cook it in an oven. So I saw that um, people cook it in the microwave. So I put it in the microwave for two minutes. And I already had seasoning beforehand for like a couple days. But I put more seasoning on. So I'm just gonna cook it uh, probably, um, I kind of like it medium. Uh, so I'll, usually it takes me at least uh, eight to 10 minutes and then I have to also put it in the oven uh, for like a couple minutes. But uh, this time I think uh, I'm just gonna try four minutes and uh, three minutes, maybe about seven to eight minutes. And then uh, we'll see how this turns out. So this is just the beginning stages. And I'm gonna pause here and then I'm just gonna re-edit later. Okay, so I just did my first flip. Right, it's looking good. Right. Not bad, not bad. So I'll add around uh, three minutes. I don't know how it's gonna taste, but um, I don't know, it's looking good so far. I like to kind of um, crunchy on the edges. So let's see, take it off. Yeah, so this is my uh, final outcome. I had to cook it a little bit more because um, it was like medium rare. So what I do is I cooked it for like 30 seconds. So I just flipped it real fast on the skillet. Uh, yeah, so yeah, let's get it. Yeah, sorry about the mess, but uh, let's try it out. Let's see how it is. Okay. Right. Look at that. Nice. Perfect. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Oh, this is my favorite beer. Cheers. Guinness. Nice medium. Mm. Look at that. Perfect. All right. Mm. Delicious. Just no Peter Lugers, but you know. Come on, a little dark. Oops, juicy. <laughs>
I mean, how'd you guys do it? You know, I know it's not easy for me, that's for sure. I mean, it's not easy, man, as a single parent, especially a male. And uh, you have, like, basically, I'm f full custodian in, in the New Jersey, New York area, right? Not easy. and a half whatever years ago I never thought I would be divorced but I had no idea that she was not satisfied with the relationship you know but things happen for reasons I guess you know if you believe in the law of attraction like a check flag right two cheaters attracted each other I guess was coming home like 2 a.m. like every single night and that was not normal 2 a.m. 1 a.m. 3 a.m. I was taking care of her sick mom while I was, my kids were little I was running business picking up them at school it was crazy back then it was absolutely crazy and uh, I had no idea she was cheating on me or whatever but um, later on I found out kind of in shell shock. I don't know, maybe it was for the best. separate because of my uh, young daughters but uh, I had no choice I gave her a couple ultimatums to like for her to stop doing that business for her to like stop seeing the guy I mean no more instances most guys wouldn't be able to even do that I think but it's just uh, you know I've been through relationships and I know people make mistakes and stuff like that so give her the ultimatum to uh, choose between that guy or me or whatever but she said she couldn't do it so I was like, I can't live like this, man. Where she's coming home 2 a.m., she's with another dude. I'm taking care of her sick mom. And I mean, she was sick. I mean, she was hysterically sick, her mom. She needed to, her mom needed to be in the hospital. But I was like taking her at, at the house with my three young daughters. My kids were super young back then. I mean, my twins were like, like only like, she's like three years old or four. And my eldest daughter was like maybe seven or eight. And she wasn't even there for the kids and all her friends, nobody knew, you know. I was like taking care of my mom, feeding her dinner, even though I knew my ex was a cheat on me without a dude, I was still taking care of mom. You know, because, because you, you know, like, even though I was so mad at my mom, at my ex, whatever, but I can't be mad at her mom. Her mom didn't do anything wrong. It's just like neg neglecting her mom, even. You know, because she'll, like, leave at, whatever, 8, 9, say she's going to near some, some meetings, and she comes home at, like, 2 in the morning, come on. After a while, yeah, in a way, like, I was dumb, not... Uh, just to believe whatever she said but um you know I, I had to find out mm. so juicy oh yeah So I don't know how to tell you guys more of my story. 
But you know, everybody has drawbacks in life, man. Life is not easy for a lot of people, I guess. My life used to be a bowl of cherries, man. Seriously. I used to go off like five days a week for like maybe three years. You know, yeah, expensive restaurants, drive nice cars or whatever. And then all of a sudden your life just crashes in, man. And um, it hits you like a tornado. It makes you like crawl like a little ball, but you know what? You know, life is about experiencing um, difficulties in your life. And you know, if you guys are struggling, you know, you gotta realize that um, there, life is never at a standstill, never. Never, ever, never, ever. If you study like metaphysics or law of attraction or whatnot, you have to realize if you think your life is neutral, then I'm just warning you right now that you better really think about your life, your situation, your, your relationship with your loved one. You really have to uh, reflect because if you think you're neutral, you're actually going backwards right now and your life is going to get worse. I'm letting you know from um, from what I went through. I don't want people to go through what I went through. If you could fix it beforehand, why not? But sometimes, yeah, you just gotta dish it out, right? You gotta do your grit, you gotta do your grind. And that's what I had to do, man. I really never thought I was getting divorced. I never thought my, my uh, ex-wife was gonna cheat on my ass. And, um, you know, I mean, she treated me good. That's what kind of like surprised me, right? She treated me good. But at the same time, she was like doing me dirty, right? Because she's really good at acting and her personality is like beyond personality. So I just don't know. So I'm taking her my three daughters. It's been a struggle. I mean, I know I could be a better father. I was single dad, but I have to concentrate a lot on like develop myself, on my mindset, and on the internet stuff. So my daughters, I think they feel like they're like, kind of like um, a little bit neglected in a way. But financially, I'm not like making like 20,000, 15,000 a month like I used to. I mean, I dropped down to like severe, like, like in American status, like poor, I guess, like shit. Like two thousand a month. I mean, shit. I used to live on like fifteen, twenty thousand dollar a month income. But um, like I said, we all go through our struggles, and um, you know, once you've um, succeeded in life, or even if you haven't, and you have that mindset, you can succeed in life. But I tell you, once you had the freedom of not working for anybody, I'm working for somebody now because I have no choice. But for like 30 years, I haven't. So I know eventually I have to figure out how am I going to get myself to shift myself to get back to making enough money where I, I could support my three daughters and live in the... Um, you know, nice pad like I used to drive the car that I used to, my lifestyle, golf. But I realized it's all about mindset. You know, you could create whatever the fuck you want in this life, right? But a lot of people, you're not told. You're told to be a slave to, to society, to, to your boss. You're, you, you know, it's called the red pencil syndrome. I'll go over it one day. I learned from my um, coach. A lot of people, they don't even understand you. Your program, you're not living your life the way you want to be. You're actually programmed by yourself. And I could prove it. 90, 90% of the world are programmed by TV, through friends, uh, social media, advertisements, and especially from school, the red pencil syndrome. The government, government feeds your mind to not become an entrepreneur, not to think for yourself. Think in the program that exists. I totally hate that shit. 
But some of my friends, I, I talk to them and they're like totally whipped into that shit. They're like total slaves and they don't even know it. And they think I'm crazy for believing in that stuff. While they're working behind a cubicle. And, and I, and I already see probably about 40% of them, they're going to get divorced. But they don't even know why. But they don't listen. They think they're like Mr. Know-it-all and shit. But, you know, they think because if this dude went through a divorce, I don't need to listen to him because he went through a divorce. But on the other hand, they should be listening to me so they could prevent themselves from getting a divorce or whatnot. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, they think they're always right. They're always talking about themselves. They think they're just so ego-based. It's not even funny. But watch. Half of them in the next 10 whatever, 20 years. I don't want them to be, but they're going to end up getting divorced. Because they're like Mr. Know-it-alls. Right? That's a problem these days. Everybody thinks like they're the shit. And the funny thing is, they might have used to listen to me when I was like driving my sales 550, my 7 Series, living the life, you know? But all of a sudden, oh, this guy that we should know, he failed, he got divorced, and he's not rich anymore, right? So they think, okay, this guy has no credibility or no knowledge anymore. But the funny thing is, once you are successful, and you have that mindset, it's like in sports or Taekwondo or martial arts or, or any game golf, you get back to your same level because you're always there. <clears throat> Just sometimes the universe corrects your path, and I realize that that um that um maybe not maybe I know that the universe forced me into this zone so I could help other people you know change their mindset if they have any problems, I could really help them out maneuver through the maze of obstacles and your and your weaknesses because so we all the most Weaknesses, people's the way you think about life, the way you think about yourself, the you know your thoughts, your thoughts are things. But people that don't understand that your thoughts are really fucking things, right? And if you're, and I'm telling you right now, if you're living the life the way you are, right? I want you to reflect 15 minutes in silence. And think about why, what thoughts have you had in the past? And as you reflect and, and observe yourself and your thoughts, you're going to realize, oh, shit, my life is this way because I've been thinking this way. I've been feeling this way. All right. That is your beliefs, your emotions, your emotions and your beliefs. So once you realize this and you take accountability, which most people do not take accountability, that's the other problem. Once you take accountability and you're an observer and you know what's going on. And why your life is so sucky the way it is, then you, you you start to realize, oh shit, I put myself in this way because of my thoughts and my beliefs and the words, right, and my habits. If I could change the way I think, if I could then change the way I believe, and I change a couple of small habits, and I think about more of success and the things that I want, right, because there's a natural law in this world is whatever you focus on grows about 95% of the world focus on negativity so they go backwards right but that's all because of the red pencil syndrome that I learned it's very simple we're all programmed already but you don't even know it so once you learn these basic principles about the law and, and how life works and you take accountability why is it so important that you take accountability? Because if you take accountability, you realize, oh shit, I, I could really change my outcome because I put myself in this outcome the way I think and shit, right? So what I'm saying is, yeah, take accountability, man. Be a man, be a woman, whatever, right? Just realize that you, your thoughts and your actions and your beliefs put you in this situation. But once you take accountability, guess what? Once you made that decision then you know you could change yourself you could change your future right 
by thinking differently, speaking differently, imagining differently, having different beliefs, and having the actions now that are different. A lot of people, that bullshit, Grant Cardone, whatever crap, I used to listen to that shit, get all hyped up. It's all hyped up bullshit, 10x your shit, right? Get pumped up. But if you 10x your shit and you don't even know what the fuck you're thinking, right? And you're on the wrong road. You don't even know what you want to do. You're doing the same shit over and over again with the same beliefs. You're just going, you're falling back even worse, man. So the fuck that 10x bullshit, that's what sells. You know, he knows that sells that shit. But um, I took, I, I, I bought all the CDs, all that bullshit. That shit don't work for nothing, man. You really got to really know what the hell you want. Got to change your beliefs first, your mindset. Mindset is everything, right? And then you could take 10x action and then things will change. But if you don't change your beliefs and you're just going out there just to grind and work hard, that's full of shit. You don't need to work hard. Anyway, peace. Oh, well.